Just recently, a major new study created waves when it found that taking a daily multivitamin does not help people to live longer and may actually have a slightly negative impact. Researchers from the National Cancer Institute in the US analyzed health records from nearly 400,000 adults with no significant diseases to see whether daily multivitamins reduce their risk of death over the next two decades. Rather than living longer, People who took daily multivitamins were marginally, by around 4%, more likely than non-users to die in the study period, with researchers concluding that multivitamin use to improve longevity is not supported. But before we go throwing our supplements away, many experts believe there is a case for some supplementation in later life to support our health, and in this video, I'm gonna take a look at the ones to prioritize based on the evidence. If you're new to the channel, I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to discover how to age well, look and feel good for longer, and share what I learned with you. I do that right here on the Honest channel, on podcast platforms, and my website, honest.scult. Now, multiple dietitians and nutritionists have come forward to say in the light of this new multivitamin study that supplements in themselves are unlikely to increase lifespan because aside from genetics, the things we know that really make the difference are nutrition, exercise, and sleep. The healthier and more varied our diet, the less the need to supplement. But they say, there are some key nutrients that we can struggle to get enough of from food and particularly as we age, when we tend to become less efficient at absorbing vitamins and minerals from food. So let's take a look now at where the consensus lies when it comes to supplements. And let me first flag that it's always a good idea to discuss vitamin supplementation with your doctor because of your own unique health history and possible drug interactions. I will also link in the description my own vitamin regimen, which includes the priority supplements discussed in this video. First on the list is vitamin D. That's because it's endorsed by a clear majority of doctors, nutritionists, and health authorities, with a lack of vitamin D lowering bone density and increasing your risk of developing osteoporosis. So low levels of vitamin D have also been linked with some chronic diseases. And the government advice here in the UK is for people to take a daily supplement containing 10 micrograms of vitamin D, equivalent to 400 international units, that's IUs, a day, year round to keep our levels up but it's all the more important in winter because of course our main natural source of vitamin D is sunlight. In the US, the National Institutes of Health say the average non-deficient adult should aim for 600 IUs per day. But that advice is aimed at preventing a deficiency in vitamin D and not designed to help achieve optimal levels. A global group of scientists came together over the COVID pandemic to advocate for taking higher levels of vitamin D than currently recommended by health officials, they were suggesting around 4,000 IUs a day. Now, excessive levels of vitamin D could be harmful and health officials in the UK advise not to exceed 4,000 IUs a day, that being the maximum. You wanna make sure your vitamin supplement contains D3, the form that ensures calcium is absorbed easily and taking vitamin K2 alongside it helps activate the protein osteocalcin, which integrates calcium into our bone so that's why you often see them together. And calcium is another frequently recommended supplement by doctors as we age to help maintain bone density. But at this stage, I rely on dietary sources of calcium alongside my vitamin D and K2 supplement. And most of us should be able to source enough calcium through a healthy diet. The supplement I take also includes magnesium, which supports vitamin D activation while having its own health benefits. And personally, I believe vitamin D has reduced the number and severity of seasonal illnesses and allergies that I had been getting and has made a big difference to how I feel in winter because before I took a regular supplement, I suffered from seasonal affective mood disorder every winter and seem to get colds more often too. So now let's talk about B vitamins. And I touched on the value of taking a B vitamin complex in a recent video on natural ways to boost your energy, which I'll also link below. B vitamins are important because they help the body convert food into energy and our blood cells need B vitamins to function too. And a big one to check as we age and ensure we have sufficient levels of is B12 because it's fairly common for older people to be either deficient 
or have suboptimal levels. And low vitamin B12 not only causes you to feel weak and tired, as my mum did before being treated, but it has also been linked with poorer brain function. B3 or niacin and the related supplements NMN and NR have also come to prominence because they've been linked with helping increase levels of NAD in our cells, which is critical for keeping them energized and working efficiently. The best form of B3 to take is a whole different question with prominent scientists at odds over this. And I've talked on the channel before about why, along with my husband and my parents, I continue to take NMN, albeit at a relatively low dose every other day, because each of us feel we've had benefits, including reduced daytime tiredness, my parents have reduced arthritis pain. And with my mom, who's tried both NR and NMN, she's convinced that NMN is the supplement that makes the biggest difference to her arthritis pain. My dad, who's 80, feels it has helped reduce inflammation because of the improved pain in his foot due to arthritis, and also because he has an enlarged prostate and he has less urinary urgency when taking NMN. However, while there are promising animal studies, the evidence from human studies so far for NMN is not so overwhelming. And it's also not widely available for sale in the US right now while it's being investigated as a potential prescription drug by the FDA. But the good news is NR, nicotinamide riboside, a cheaper vitamin B3 derivative, recently attracted attention because it was found to significantly boost mobility in a group of older people with peripheral arterial disease caused by fatty deposits called plaques, which build up in the arteries, restricting blood flow. Scientists at Northwestern University and the University of Florida worked with a group of 90 men and women, mostly in their 70s, who had the condition and measured how far each volunteer could walk in six minutes. Half the group took 1,000 milligrams of the NR supplement for six months, while the rest took a placebo. The results published in the journal Nature Communications showed that those taking the supplement regularly were able to walk 23 feet further on average over six minutes at the end of the trial. Some of the group given NR were also given resveratrol, but no statistically significant conclusion could be drawn there because that group was less compliant with researchers speculating that may have been due to the higher incidence of side effects like stomach upsets in the group that were also given resveratrol. Now, walking speed actually fell in those who took a placebo, and that's because peripheral artery disease causes progressive decline in walking performance. So the supplement appeared to not only stop the progression, but improved mobility overall. So that's an exciting one. The researchers also say a larger trial is now needed to fully confirm the results, but it's another interesting study that does point to there being something special about B3 in relation to aging, and it's one to keep a close eye on. What's also not known though, is the long-term safety of taking B3-related supplements, particularly at higher doses. Personally, I try to hedge my bets by alternating between taking a lower dose of about 250 milligrams of NMN one day, and I take a multivitamin on the other day, which includes an active or methylated B vitamin complex, that covers all the B vitamins, including B3, because the methylated form can be more readily absorbed. But that dose may still be overdoing it. And the reality with supplementing at the moment is that we just can't be sure what the correct amounts or assortment of vitamins are for us, particularly long-term, which is why the greater focus has got to be put on diet and lifestyle. And just like skincare, I don't believe we need to be using high-strength supplements every day. And there are a lot of doctors who flag that problems can start when we go to extremes. And it's also a good idea to get your vitamin and mineral levels tested every now and then to check for deficiencies or levels that may be too high. Another important nutrient supplement commonly recommended is of course omega-3. Now we can source omega-3 fatty acids naturally through oily fish like salmon and trout, and also plant foods like walnuts, flaxseed, and chia seeds. I include walnuts in the handful of nuts I eat every day, and I try to eat fish twice a week to ensure I'm getting enough omega-3. But I do supplement from time to time. And for those who struggle to get enough through their diet, it may be worth considering a supplement because our bodies 
need these polyunsaturated fats and we can only get them from food or supplements. Some studies suggest it's a consumption of omega-3s in our diet that offers the most all-round benefit. Having a higher intake of omega-3 has been shown to help with depression and anxiety, though it's not suggested as a primary treatment for those conditions. It's been linked with improved eye health and a reduced risk of macular degeneration. Significantly, it's also been shown to support heart health with lower rates of heart attack and stroke in fish-eating communities linked to higher omega-3 consumption and it's thought to help lower chronic inflammation as well. So while those are what I would call the mainstream anti-aging supplements that there's quite a bit of consensus around, there are some other interesting ones to mention too. Firstly, creatine. Now I'm not actually taking creatine at the moment but every time I look into it I think I really should. Creatine is a natural chemical that's mostly found in your muscles and brain and also produced by your pancreas and kidneys, and it's mainly stored in your muscles. And while you can get low amounts from eating seafood and red meat, supplementing with higher amounts has been shown to improve physical performance, and that's why you're seeing an increasing number of nutritionists on social media now recommending this supplement. And one of the biggest benefits for me, I think, is that it has been linked with speeding up muscle growth and helping offset sarcopenia, which is the age-related decrease of muscle and also bone mass. It's something my mum at 81 has experienced badly in her back due to osteoporosis. And so I'm also going to be talking with her about potentially taking creatine. Another one is curcumin, the active compound found in turmeric. I don't actually take a supplement myself, but I do cook with turmeric regularly, with two separate research reviews published in the last five years, concluding that it does have an anti-inflammatory impact on the body. Also of interest as we age is lutein, known as the eye vitamin. It's a carotenoid related to beta carotene and vitamin A, which is why people talk about carrots and eye health. Lutein could help prevent age-related macular degeneration, and it's included in the multivitamin that I take. Dietary lutein might help prevent cataracts, but research has yet to confirm whether supplements can have the same effect as food. What that means is a diet rich in fruits and vegetables should provide enough lutein for most healthy adults. And let's also look at collagen peptides. Now, I published an episode dedicated to this, which goes much deeper into the research, and I'll link that below. This is a supplement I do take, although admittedly I go through periods like now of not taking it, simply because I haven't got around to ordering more supplies. Research suggests that collagen supplements, specifically collagen peptides, do help increase skin elasticity, hydration, and thickness whilst also helping improve symptoms of osteoarthritis and reducing overall joint pain. Now, the majority of people, including me, don't eat enough collagen foods like the skin of poultry and fish, organ meats and bone broth. So that's why I supplement on and off with a collagen peptide powder at a relatively low dose of just a few grams, which has been shown to be effective. Lastly, another supplement we're hearing more and more about is urolithin A, which is made in the gut when we eat foods like almonds, walnuts, and pomegranates, because they are high in some particularly helpful polyphenols called ellagic acid. Preliminary research suggests it could improve gut and mitochondrial health as well as muscle function and could be particularly helpful as we age. Right now, rather than taking a supplement, I just ensure I include those foods pretty much daily in my diet, both for the nutrients, but also because crucially it's dietary fiber that is so vital for gut health. And as we now know, a healthy gut microbiome is what really helps our bodies, including our brain, muscle and skin to function best. We're also increasingly hearing about a super antioxidant called astaxanthin, which is found in certain algae and fish like salmon and trout. It's linked with multiple health benefits, but again, for the time being, rather than adding in yet another supplement, I just try to eat salmon twice a week. And that's because there is no better route through healthy aging than eating a diverse natural diet, cutting right back on the processed stuff, and sugary sweetened drinks. Supplements cannot make up for poor diet and sedentary lifestyle or heavy alcohol consumption, and there are no quick fixes or health hacks. 
if we're not covering the basics. That said, I've seen through my own parents in their 80s that select supplements have improved their energy levels, immune function, bone health, and apparently decreased problems relating to inflammation, including arthritis pain. And a lot of experts will say that just keeping your basic levels of vitamins up through a, a simple multivitamin doesn't have to be taken every day can be helpful. But it's also true to say that the relatives in my family who've lived into their 90s, and I'm sure you know people like this as well, didn't take any supplements and stood out for maintaining a healthy weight, staying active and social, and having a can-do positive mindset. And as to whether biohackers who go to extremes to live longer actually end up giving themselves the edge over those people who just live healthy, active, and happy lives, well, that remains to be seen. For me, my focus for taking supplements alongside my diet and exercise routines is to enhance my life right now and hopefully reduce my chance of age-related conditions like osteoporosis while supporting my immune system, sleep, reducing inflammation and increasing my energy levels. So what's your view? Which supplements are an absolute must for you and what kind of a difference have they made, do you think? Let us know in the comments. And I'll be back next week with a hugely inspiring interview with 72-year-old bodybuilder Renee Landers that you won't want to miss. For now, thanks for joining me.